Welcome to another video. This one is about taking double integrals. Now, if you are taking calculus three, it means how to integrate anything is no longer your problem. The usual problem in this topic is how to set up the integral. It's like you setting up your own problem, like getting equations from a word problem that's usually the harder part of double integrals it is not how to integrate but for many people who never get to calculus 3 or to do advanced calculus or any kind of multivariable calculus then this might be something they've never done before and this is probably the people um, for whom the video was made now if you already know how to do this enjoy the video if you don't know how to do this it is very simple it is the same thing you would do if there was just one integral you just have to do one at a time let's get into the video so this is how you do this there are two variables you may not see them, but how would you know there are two variables? Well, there is dy and there is dx. So there are two variables. It appears that we only have x showing up. We don't see any y. So when you don't see y, there's always an invisible one representing y. So the first question you ask yourself is, which one am I supposed to do first? Is this a multiplication or a composition? Well, it's called a double integral. So a composition might be what you are looking at. So you're gonna look at this. Don't forget about what you have here. That's none of your business. Your business is what you have here. Which one is closer to the house? The one that's closer to the house is the one you give attention to first. Leave the one that's outside. So what you do here, you know that Y is closer to the house also the integral and the bounds that are the the integration limits closer to the house are the ones you focus on so right now ignore the first one and ignore dx and focus on this now what are you going to integrate with respect to well you don't see anything here you're going to assume there is a one there so what we have here is equal to the integral from negative two to one of now we're going to integrate whatever we integrate we're going to have dx at the end of it so we're going to integrate so let me just write it you're going to be integrating one dy so just assume you have one here dy and the bounds of the integration will be 3x plus sorry 3x plus 2 and then you have x squared plus 4x here as the lower bound. So now let's do this integration. This is the integral from negative two to one of, if you integrate one dy, what would you get? Well, you know, y shows up. So what you have is basically y, but now you're gonna evaluate this y from this lower bound, which is x squared plus 4x to the upper bound, 3x plus two. And this, dx. I'm going to leave it this way. That's all you need to do. Now, do not let the bounds confuse you. This is the most important thing, because when things get crazy, you might think you should switch it, although you can by Fubini, but let's not talk about Fubini yet. Okay. And by the way, you can switch the order. You can bring this one in, and switch this one to dx so that you do the inside first before you do the outside. But that's not going to be cool for you because then you cannot truly evaluate what your values are. That would be the problem with this. So just stick to what we have here. Um, so this is going to be equal to, um, what do we have? We have, um, let's evaluate this. So this is going to be equal to the integral from negative two to one. Now remember our normal integration strategy, it's gonna be three x plus two minus x squared plus four x. So we're gonna have three x 
plus 2 minus x squared plus 4x here. Okay, we still have, don't forget our dx. So we'll end up with a polynomial in the middle. Negative 2, 1. Here we're going to have 3x minus 4x. That's going to be negative x. So we have negative x. Then you have 2 here, plus 2. Then you have minus x squared. Okay, that's how you have it, dx. So this is the polynomial which every calculus student who does the integration can do. So let's integrate this. This is going to be, if you integrate negative x, you end up with negative x squared over 2. If you integrate 2, you're going to get 2x. And if you integrate x squared, you're going to get x cubed divided by 3. All evaluated from negative 2 to 1. And there's no plus c because it's a definite integral. So let's plug in the numbers. Now, how would you like to do yours? Some people like to plug in 1 first and then plug in 2. I usually just plug in both of them at the same time. So I know that in the very first part, this is negative x squared. So it's negative x squared. I'm going to take my x to be 1. That's going to be 1 squared minus negative 2 squared. So 1 squared is 1 minus negative 2 squared is going to be 4. And I'm going to divide this by 2. I'm done with that. I go to the next one plus 2 times. I'm going to plug in the top number 1 minus, I'm going to plug in the bottom number, negative 2. But if I put negative 2 here, it becomes positive. I've seen people do this. I like that. Okay, minus. I'm going to have um, this divided by 3. What is x cubed is going to be 1 cubed minus negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 8. So that gives me another plus plus. So what do we have? Here we have 1 minus is going to be negative 3. Negative negative 3 is 3 halves. So I have 3 over 2. And here I have plus 2 times, this is 1 plus 2 is 3, that's going to be 6. And I have minus, this is going to be 9 over 3, which is 3. So if you look at it, it is 3 halves plus 3, which is going to be 9 halves. So our answer here is 9 over 2. This is a cool introduction to this topic. Some crazy ones are going to come up, which I might just, I think I should do some crazier ones, okay, that require some thinking, not just straightforward like this. Still double integrals. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.